Okay, hello everyone, and thank you for joining me to discuss the osteology of the orbit and the eye. We're going to go over the structures from the list of structures that are pertinent to the osteology, and we'll talk a little bit about why we want you to know these things, but more importantly, we really want to give you kind of a, a tour of how to know that you're looking at that particular structure, so kind of some tips of the trade there. Okay, so let's start with this uh, particular view, this anterior lateral view of the cranium. And you can see that you can see a bit better of a medi the medial portion of the orbit when you're looking at this anterior lateral view. So let's start with the lacrimal fossa of the frontal bone. And so you have two very similarly named uh, structures. You have lacrimal fossa and you have lacrimal groove. The lacrimal fossa of the frontal bone is where the true lacrimal gland is going to sit. So this is where the gland is sitting. And I'm trying out this thing and it's going okay. So we're going to have the actual lacrimal gland sitting in the lacrimal fossa, which is right about here-ish. So this is an important um, thing to note. The lacrimal gland is actually sitting fairly superior lateral in the orbit. So the gland is going to sit here, but tears eventually drain into this region. So if you think about when uh, lacrimal fluid is secreted as tears, you kind of blink your eyes and eventually makes its way over here. Moving on to the lacrimal bone, the lacrimal bones their paired bones are the, um, other than the ear ossicles, the smallest bones of the body, um, give or take some of your sesamoid bones. So right here is your lacrimal bone that I just outlined right there. And probably the most dominant thing that you can see on the lacrimal bone is this depressed area right here referred to as the lacrimal groove. So lacrimal groove is right here. And this is where your lacrimal sac sits. And this is the proximal dilation of the uh, nasolacrimal duct. And this is where, basically this is where tears collect. This is where tears collect before they drain into the inferior nasal meatus. So the tears will be secreted here, eventually make its way to the lacrimal groove, into the lacrimal sac, and eventually make its way into your inferior nasal meatus. Moving on to the zygomatic bone, right here. This is all going to be part of your zygomatic. Colloquially, we refer to the zygomatic bone as the cheekbone. And the specific part that we need you to know for this particular lab is the orbital surface. So this is kind of the the uh, external surface of the zygomatic, and right here, this region right here, is the orbital surface. So it's actually um, forming a good portion of that lateral wall, and even a little bit of the inferior wall of the orbit. Moving on to openings, um, I just want to note that you can clearly see in this view two small foramina right here. These are ethmoidal foramina. We do not need to know that for this particular lab, but that's what those are. But these three you do need to know. So you have your optic canal here. This is uh, very clear to see. It's almost a perfect circle. The optic canal, as its name would suggest, is going to have the optic nerve traversing through this region, which is cranial nerve two. Additionally, your ophthalmic arteries are going to be traversing and entering into the orbit through the optic canals. Right next to this, and more irregularly shaped, is the superior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure is extremely important in terms of the orbital region because this is how your, your nerves that are innervating your extraocular eye muscles are getting into this region. So remember, those are oculomotor, or cranial nerve 3, trochlear, cranial nerve 4, and abducens, cranial nerve 6. Additionally, the first division of the trigeminal nerve is going to be moving through this region, which is also called the ophthalmic division. And last but not least, and what we often forget to talk about, but we shouldn't, are your veins. So this is how the ophthalmic veins are traversing the region. 
And lastly, we have your inferior orbital fissure right here. So as its name would suggest, it's going to be inferior to the superior. So this is superior, this is inferior. And you're going to have branches of the second division of your trigeminal nerve moving through here, specifically your infraorbital nerve and your zygomatic nerve. All right, moving to a straight anterior view of the skull, you can see a few of these things in um, a little bit better and a few of these things not quite as clearly as in the anterior lateral view. I feel like you can see the lacrimal fossa a little bit better here. So this depression right in this region, that's where that lacrimal gland sits. The lacrimal groove is a little bit more difficult to see, but it would be right in this region, right in this region. You can see a nice view now of that orbital surface. So you can see the suture line right here, and this, all this region right here where my pen is moving is the orbital surface. If you look really medially, you can see a bit of the optic canal. You can have a nice kind of wing-like view of your superior orbital fissure. And then just a little bit of that inferior orbital fissure. All right, recall this view from the cranial cavity lab. This is your cranial base, or the bottom of the uh, skull, but you're looking at it in a superior view. So think the skull cap or the calvary has been removed, and so we're looking into these fossil regions. So you have your anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and then posterior cranial fossa. And you really can only see two of the structures that we need you to know from this view. You can see the optic canals right here, really closely associate, associated to that lesser wing of the sphenoid. And you can see a little bit of superior orbital fissure, but the majority of the superior orbital fissure is being occluded um, from, by that lesser wing of the sphenoid. So if you think if you were actually holding this and you kind of tilted it, you'd see a little bit more of that superior orbital fissure. But as long as those lesser wings of the sphenoids are there, it's difficult to see that. You cannot see the inferior orbital fissure from this particular view. This inferior orbital fissure is a connection between the pterygopalatine fossa and the orbit, so not possible to see from this view. All right, thank you for your time. I hope that um, this helps kind of get you oriented in terms of the osteology, will help guide you for the other structures in today's uh, session. Thank you.